All right, hey you guys, it's Jordan, and uh, I'm gonna try to make this one pretty short. I tried to do this before, but it ended up being like two hours long. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I have I have notes to make it like more organized and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, and I'll use my art station because I have most of my stuff posted here, and uh, just kind of talk about like the processes between like the different pieces and whatnot um a lot of them a lot of them were pretty challenging in their own way they were all challenging in their own ways but I'll, I'll get more specific on each one and maybe maybe i can even give you guys some tips along the way i don't know um but just a quick note uh i don't know what's going on with fzd right now so like if anyone's asking i really don't <laughs> like i don't know where he's what he's planning to do next none of that um and as far as uh what was the other thing oh and as far as like where i am currently with everything i'll let you guys know about that too so um i don't have my webcam i'm not using that right now because well fz took fzd took my hair so uh or at least portions of it that <laughs> i'm not happy with so uh let me see I should be able to actually plug in my keyboard now that that I uh unplug my webcam. All right, so um so what I've been up to um pretty much uh once I got back I, from from FZD uh pretty much did some applications, but first thing was um you know working towards a job or whatever to you know emergency funds all that fun stuff. Uh, I really know. Well, I'll, okay, we'll talk about that later. Whatever. All right. So, um, project one. So project one was pretty much uh the Belgaria that you see from here to here. Now, like when we were in class, I think we were aiming for about ten pieces. Um, and I have some pieces. Like in total, I think I had eight. But um, the the ones that I did before, I don't. I didn't feel like they reached the the benchmark that I was going for. I mean, I always feel like that with anything that I finish pretty much, but, but, um, some of these are also from term two. So, uh, everything on these two rows are from term three. And then these are from term two. So I'll go over them and kind of talk about my process bet behind them. I'll try to make this pretty quick. Cause like I said, I tried this before and, um, that was a two hour long, uh, ramble. So, so with this first one, um, it's pretty much just a ship. So this is kind of where my process started to make sense or the most sense to me. Um, basically, I was kind of at the time in uh, term two. I think this was like week. Uh, I think this is week eight, I want to say. So like it was a little bit close to the it was closer to the end of the term. And I, and I was trying to figure out like what what kind of style did I want to go with? Did I want to go like more realistic and photo real or did I want to go a little bit more stylized? Um, and eventually I kind of, uh, decided to do stylized more than photo real, but, uh, obviously, I mean, this has a long way to go. I'll just go ahead and open this up real quick. So yeah, I did, <laughs> I did actually a lot more research than I probably should have. Like whenever I'm Whenever I'm designing things, especially things I'm not familiar with, like 18th century ships or anything like that, I always try to do like some extra research to see like why certain things are linked to other things. So it just kind of makes me um, consider a lot more things whenever I'm designing around that specific thing. Right. Like um, like for these little thingies here, I didn't really <laughs> kind of they're still pretty. I mean, everything's pretty sketchy. Right. But like um the these little things like there is this um virtual tour like you can get reference for for things like this in a lot of different ways right um for this ship specifically i used i basically looked at this um this virtual tour of a recreation so like that's another way that you can find like especially if you're doing historical projects or um anything that's like fantasy that that's based off of historical um settings or something like that a lot of the times you can find um, recreations or like reconstructions or whatever, restorations of certain things. So in this case, it was a restoration of a 
um, I think it was called a research ship of the 18th century. So I pretty much um, did a lot of looking around on that and just tried to, you know, note as many details as I could, watched a bunch of videos and stuff like that to try to see like, um, you know, what things can I add that like, that are a little bit more, uh, a little bit deeper than surface level detail someone would pick up, um, which was pretty tedious. I mean, like as far as detail, um, level of detail goes, it's always nice to do a little bit more research, but um, I mean, overall, I don't think the project was like, this is the one that I, I, I didn't feel like I rushed too much, but there was definitely like some hiccups <laughs> on, I mean, I, I guess you could say that for any project, right? But, but um, for the design on this one, it was pretty, it was pretty challenging. Um, trying to balance, you know, entertainment values between, uh, you know, trying to balance like how much I try to lean into um, entertainment values versus uh, what's a design value, right? Like how cool do I want to make it versus how functional? That's always like a, a big thing to try to balance with these. Um, yeah. And this is pretty much just a line layer. And I think I can find, um, oh no, I picked the files on my Google Drive, never mind. But basically, um, yeah, I just block it in in 3D and use, uh, what do I use? I'm a little shaky because it's been a while since I've done this. But um, I use, uh, what's it called? What is it called? What is it called? Freestyle. So I use freestyle to get the contours of every object pretty much. And you can kind of tell when you zoom in um for some of them for something let me see i don't know if i started using or i don't know what i use contour for actually <laughs> but a lot of the times it's just the, oh god that skew why did i do that i skewed it like into the <laughs> but uh yeah for a lot of the silhouettes of objects i would normally just have freestyle do that and then um i'll add the inner details myself so and try to add like a little value through that but overall like yeah it's pretty skit like it's sketchy like it, it, i didn't i wasn't aiming for like perfect line quality or anything like that that was something that i kind of um i kept i kept uh i kept getting caught up on that especially because in fzd like you're you're making designs but you're also polishing them a lot you know a lot more than you probably would in uh, real on a real project right so like I was just like well if it makes sense and, and it's you're able to see the details I don't think the lines need to be super perfect so I, I didn't really like you can see like towards some spots I just like <laughs> uh, let me see I just scribble stuff like right here I just like scribble the barrels in whatever like who's not, no I don't think anyone's looking at that um and then this was the interior keep in mind like I, I I'm not looking at these like they're perfect or anything like that. Obviously, there's a lot of things that you would always want to change when you look at something that you made in the past. But um, I mean, it is what it is. Eh? Um, so, yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, I think I spoke about this actually already because I remember talking about the oranges and stuff <laughs> and the bananas. OK, so I'll just go ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead and I think I talked about this one and this one and this one. I think. But you can see like from here, from here, like this is where it kind of started to make sense as far as uh, my process goes. I started getting more comfortable with it. And, um, you know, I I'd say one thing that I didn't use enough of, I always made sure to use reference for like, I mean, that's what FZD does, right? Like you're, you're trained um, to use reference for everything. But like the one thing I think I didn't use enough reference for like at all was color. Um, I would always try to come up with the colors on my own. I think on this one, I did use the colors, like the color schemes or whatever from the same ship, uh, pretty much. But even then, yeah, I, I could have used a lot more uh, reference. And that was, I think that idea I got from, you know, the friends in my, um, that were at the table that I would always sit with. They would always kind of have these mood boards and stuff like that. And um, I never caught on to it, but it's definitely something that that's important um 
because I, I guess I guess the whole thing about it is like the more that you pay attention to what colors look nice together and other um, mediums or whatever, like the easier it is for you to make your own color scheme, I guess you could call. I mean, even even though it's like no one, no color scheme is completely original, but you get what I'm saying. Like it, it it's like reference as far as knowing the functionality of something like you can make up your own functionality if you know enough about what you're designing. So. Uh, so, okay, so this is um, from the first project in term three. So, yeah, a little bit more consistent as far as um, style goes. And I'll go over all the files and stuff like that so you guys can see. Um, holy shit, we're already at 10 minutes, dude. Um, I'll try to speed this up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this was supposed to be a kitchen. Uh, basically, we just designed these based off of book descriptions. Um, it was up to us whether or not, you know, we go and look up the book or whatever and read more to get like extra details and whatnot. And um, it was it was this this was described as like a grand kitchen where like a bunch of people would be working at the same time. So I kind of took some inspiration from my grandmother's kitchen, actually. Um, <laughs> she would kill me if I said that. But but uh, there's always like, you know, different kinds of uh you know, tools and stuff like that you would never know the function of, but they were always kind of stacked together and, and mismatched in different places. So I just kind of um, used the reference for that. Uh, and I think my grandmother's kitchen is what sparked that because, you know, you would always see something from like, you know, 30 years ago that, that hasn't been used, but but it's still, you know, it's like, oh, wow, that's how that thing works. And um, these are my attempts at trying to make food <laughs> on the uh, on the thingy. Uh, didn't use much reference for that either. I think I used a little bit of reference for like the colors and stuff, but like I didn't think it was that important. But looking back on it, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and this was like a baking spot. Always gotta have your herbs in some spots. Um, yeah, pretty much a bunch of baking stuff and a, a little furnace. I thought that would be cool. But looking back at this, I don't know how these arches would work if this wall was filled in. You get what I mean? Like, if this was entirely stone, I don't know how these wooden beams would be in the stone. That would be pretty interesting to see. <laughs> to see. It's it's small stuff like that that you start to notice, like, um, towards the end. Like, when you're finishing something and you don't always have the time to go back and change all those things. Uh, you always notice stuff like that. And it just bugs. Like, that's, that's one of the biggest things. It would always bug the mess out of me. Because, like... Um, you know, you don't always have the time to go back and change those things. It's like after, you know, 50, 60 hours working on the same design, like you're like, you look back at it and there's so many things you would change and so many mess like errors that you come across. And it's just like, oh, you don't have the time to fix them. So like, might as well just, <laughs> yeah. Um, so if, that, if there is one thing or one advice or one piece of advice that I would give to people, it, it would be to like consider what these environments would look like without the cutaways of the walls. Um, going forward, I'll definitely like do a cut version and an uncut version um, for, for spots like this, because I, I just think it'd be helpful to give a little bit more um, context. Same with this furnace, right? Like, sure, it looks fine here, but like if you were to look at this building from the exterior, um, this would look a little weird. Um, if you look up here, I'll, I'll try I'll try to pull up some actually. OK. One sec. Um, OK, so obviously you're going to get Minecraft like whenever you look up medieval anything. Um, it's crazy how people are just able to, uh, okay, ramble, holy shit. Uh, all right, look at this one, right, a hall house. This is pretty much kind of what I use for reference, um, hall houses. Uh, another good thing is to like to learn the terminologies. Um, I'm not saying you have to go and write everything down, but when, something, when you feel like something's important enough, at least save it on like a Pinterest page or something. Like I can show you guys my Pinterest page real quick. Um, let me see. So, yeah, I always have like Pinterest pages for any even things like furniture, right? Like um, shapes that I find interesting, you know, from any time period, it, it, it can always influence your designs and stuff. I think it's pretty nice. So like having these boards and then following other boards that do the same thing. Right. Um, 
yeah yeah it, it definitely man it's it's so underrated actually um let me see the most annoying thing is the shopping list i don't know why like it does this like whenever you save anything it's like oh yeah yeah you i know you want to buy this like 700 dollar cabinet what's wrong with these people um medieval kitchen so let's look at the reference i use for this so you can see a lot of it like you just look at how objects are placed together and it's like oh, okay that makes sense you know and then you add your own kind of flavor or a touch to it so like you'd be like oh like I, I whenever i look at this i'd be like oh then they like what if the barrel was actually just here <laughs> and there is like something else here like what if there were potions here instead of just empty bottles you know what if there were um trophies what if there were uh you know you just ask you ask yourself those what if questions and it just starts to design itself you know if like for example um and i'm not saying anything that's like th there's not going to be anything nuanced or like um i don't know if that's the right word but like there's no advice that i can give that's like going to be the one thing that makes everything click right like everything that we were taught at fzd were was on like the youtube channel of the school it was just like you spend so many hours like um, building up on that you know and just kind of making it muscle memory um, if that makes any sense so like all of these things are you just, like we don't even have to think about it almost it's so natural for us now like um, and I say us because like <laughs> I'm including like every other student that's went to that school pretty much um, but yeah you know, you just it's always nice like to see and even with these um, I don't know what this is like it does this call out thing but you can get terminologies from that too. So that's pretty neat. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but if you, um, back to my original point, holy hell. If you guys, what the hell was that? If you guys want to, like, I can also link my, my um, Pinterest page if you guys ever want to use like some of the reference. I always update some of these. Some of these are locked until, like I actu actually have like a, something to like uh, call it. Like it, once it has enough pins that, that I feel like it could really help someone else, then I'll, you know, unpin it um, or unlock it. But yeah, just uh, reference. So good. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, but yeah, like if you see this chimney right now, imagine this chimney was on this corner. It was like on this corner and it was turned about 45 degrees. Like it would look a little weird right so like that's that's the main thing that i noticed with my um oh wait whoops that i noticed with this i felt like it was a little weird so it's 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 running into problems like that that you just kind of um that was like one of the biggest things that would frustrate me uh during fzd it was like you're you're touching things up to such a degree because you want them to be on your portfolio right you want the pieces to look nice or whatever the designs um to stand out you know, because no one's going to pay attention to it, really, if it if it doesn't have like a nice presentation, like um, that's when people start to care about the details. That's at least something we were told. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that would frustrate the mess out of me, though. Like I would always notice things that I wished I could change towards the end and it would just kind of warp my whole like understand or like it would, it would kind of make me just want to throw the whole thing away <laughs> because i'm not able to change those things and then like now post school like i don't even want to touch these things at all uh so yeah and then the, the, blah, 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 blah. there's the line layer here so i'll i guess i can zoom in like i said it's just like you you build some stuff you arrange some stuff you kit bash some stuff and then you just draw over it and it just gives it a really um you know some of it's pretty nice to look at I prefer the lines more than I do the finishing because I mean to me the lines are just much better I, I just can't stand like at least right now how I finish things um, yet like I'm not saying it's super bad or anything but but it's not exactly where I want it to be yet that's all I, I think and I'll talk about the style and stuff like that that I'd, I'd like to have eventually or that I work towards um, what is this Oh, okay, I see. Yep. Um, I, I'd say if I had to bring up anything, like the the limitations of using the 3D instead of like drawing 
you know, traditionally using like a, a grid and just drawing on all the details is the fact that like, like for me personally, I didn't have that many, that much uh, mileage on drawing with perspective. Like I would always like before I would just draw helmets and stuff like that, like just general stuff that, that wouldn't really require that much um, uh, perspective, even to this day. So like, and I'll talk about some of that stuff pretty soon, but like what would limit me was like, if I wanted to put like a towel onto something and I wanted it to flow in the right direction, like I didn't have a, a lot of mileage doing stuff like that. So to me, everything started to look a little stiff because, you know, if I wanted to add in like a bear head or, or like a, a a fur rug or something, who knows, right? You, like if, if I'm not able to block that in a blender, uh, to draw over it, I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> so, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later too, because that was something that also frustrated me a lot. Um, the fact that I was kind of I, I relied on Blender so much that, um, it, like it would, it would kind of turn into whatever I made being like maybe I would say like sixty or seventy percent of what I imagined. Like it, it's it's not like the same as like when when people when artists think up an idea and then they they um you know they have they they know what it looks like in their mind and then they go to draw and it doesn't look the same it's not like that it's like or maybe it is um honestly <laughs> honestly but but uh yeah it, it was it wasn't like that it was more like like a like a like a weight like it was like I was trying to reach for something a little higher, but like a weight was kind of weighing me down. Um, and, and when you're in FCD, like you don't have a lot of time to really well, you could experiment. But the last thing I wanted to do was experiment on my, you know, final projects that were supposed to go on my portfolio and then end up with a bad portfolio because I experimented too much. Like my whole plan with these were to um, with my term three stuff. Um, was to push myself outside of the comfort of making smaller rooms. Um, I got, I started, I felt like I started getting really comfortable with small spaces. So I started, you know, making things bigger. And you'll see what I mean by that um, in the second half of the third term. So, um, so here's what I was talking about with um, not having a lot of uh, perspective mileage, right? So, <laughs> I, I kind of, well, I, I won't say I suck at it, but it just takes me a long time to, to the point where like during FZD time is like your most valuable, um, resource in a way. So like, that's why a lot of the times we were sleeping like four hours a night, you know, um, working like 18 hours a day, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but yeah, uh, yeah. So like, I, I was so scared of like running out of time for some, some of these things that eventually I just started doing top down. Uh, sketches with reference because it, it would make sense to me um these are some of the sketches that i did like the top downs that i did for the um for this and you can see like i have things marked a little bit um i'd, I'd have like cameras planned out in different spots and a lot of the times i would take a an existing floor plan and then just change it you know i would just change maybe like 60 percent of it right and it just just leave it at the what in the hell? Uh, leave it at that. Your the browser is just beginning. Oh, they look happy. Uh, where the fuck did my? Okay, so yeah. Uh, instead of doing like three quarter sketches, uh, what I would do is just top down because it just makes the most sense to me and it's the it's the quickest. That's all I pretty much cared about at the time was like making the quickest like getting to the end product as quick as I could. Um, whether, whether it holds my portfolio back, including these things or not, I, I still don't know. Um, but these are the blockings. So I, I, yeah, so I'll open these up too and I'll move this. So yeah, the, the top down sketches. And then, uh, so this is kind of what it would look like when I block it in and blender. So like it, you can see, like I, to me, it makes sense. Like this one right here. So this little space right here, this square space, just ended up being this. So like it, I just change it a little bit, and then that's where it ends up being. And um, 
I block in so like I quickly make a bunch of like pots and bowls to kind of just simulate what a kitchen would probably look like eventually and and uh, I don't go as far as making like a table and whatnot I just pair a block there and it just makes sense for for that time being because if it looks good you know composition wise and all that kind of stuff at this point I think it'll be fine and I explored a lot of different ideas for this too like um, a, a, originally the kitchen was going to be connected to a dining room but um, I just decided to you know keep it um, keep it one thing because I, I was starting to get a little bit too ambitious uh, with how big I wanted to make the space and the thing that I hate the most that I found after term three was the fact that like when you zoom out um, when you zoom out on on like a, an environment or a cutaway or a room interior you start to lose a lot of the um, like a personal touch to things like everything is a, le a little bit less intimate because you're not able to see you know the quote um, fourth and fifth level details on objects you don't see the personalization you don't you start to see the bigger objects so everything that's you know smaller than maybe your hand is pretty much invisible but if you if you have the camera a little bit more zoomed in um, you're able to show those smaller objects um, so like here like sure like the biggest the smallest object is pretty much a bowl you see but like if the camera was a little bit more zoomed in you would have things like you know your your spoons and your knives and what else what all kinds of other stuff that go with that um and i can probably find examples of that in the reference page for the kitchen so maybe that kind of helps me explain this a little better <clears throat> So yeah, imagine something like this, right? Where you have like, I don't know why it keeps going darker. I hate that. Or maybe this would be better. No. Okay. Imagine this one, right? So like zoomed in, you, like if you were, if the camera quality was a little better, um, you, you can see the little jars and what's inside of them, right? And like, you can see like, maybe if they had some of what's inside the jars on plates that were getting ready to get ground up or something that little notes next to the plates on how to mix the herbs and all that kind of stuff those kinds of details give you even more information about that space right whereas like if you zoomed out like all of these things start to become a real a real blur and what i mean by that um is like here like it's like I'm like when it comes to the soup in the in the pot or something, I don't know why it's shaped like that. Uh, uh, Jesus, man, a roasting session for my own work. Um, but I hope I hope through me doing that sometimes it kind of helps you guys understand at least um, where things can be improved. Like I, the last thing I want you guys to do is look at this stuff and think it's perfect or think that it's um, flawless, you know, because it's not. And there's a lot of things. Anything can be improved pretty much. Um, but like with this soup, that's the, that's the space you're working with to kind of communicate that. And like, um, it, I guess it's hard to explain, but I think you guys get what I mean. Like with this, like I could have, oh wait, whoops. How do I, yeah, I don't know. Like with these little cups and, and you know, these, I could, I could have, I don't know it's like the smaller details i just like things being more zoomed in it feels more comfortable uh to me even though i like i do like designing bigger spaces it, the, the the personal feeling you get from being able to see everything you know without having to zoom in like like everything's here but like you have to zoom in and look at it and e even then it just feels like something's missing i'm not able to put a finger on it yet but some of you guys might get what I mean to other people. I sound like an idiot. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Pictures of reference kind of pointing to different things. Quickest way to explain things for me sometimes. Um, also like I, if, if I, there were things that I didn't want to forget, I just write them down. Like I, I tools, storage, supplies, plates, bowls, vases, cauldrons, pots, pans, you know, all those kinds of things, uh, that would be in the kitchen. Like if you don't want to forget those things, you just write them down. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was the second idea I had for that. And um, let's see if I can find maybe, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. 
Oh, this is for later. Uh, maybe it's in my file. Hold on. Okay, this one's a little bit better. So this one's kind of a collection of all of the ones that I used. So you can see like I went from these two designs and I kind of had a third iteration where I thought about it this way, where it'd be like a little level change between the two spaces and have like a little kitchen here, you know, kitchen spot here. And I'm thinking about how the space would be used as well. But like you can see with this, it was kind of like the overall shape of the room was just a rectangle, which was kind of weird if you're trying to fit it onto a rectangle. Um, but you see, the thing is, you see this a lot in Pathfinder and um, a lot of top down games that would use a similar style. Like I, I've been trying to look at these kinds of because um, I've been playing a lot of Pathfinder lately and I'm trying to see like what makes these because it could be just me overthinking like a lot of things that I see in this were we're taught not to do. So like it's it's always trying to like balance and unlearn certain things that might actually benefit you in the long run for what you're trying to work on. Um, in my case, it's games like Pathfinder and top-down um, RPGs and stuff. I really like them. So, um, but you can see, like, even here, I think they struggle with it a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. So the 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 more you zoom out, the more simplified each one of those small objects start to get, and you just kind of lose the ability to um, make them a little bit more unique. Like with these bottles, <laughs> you that you're using, you have such a small space that you can only really communicate that they're simple bottles which can benefit you in a lot of spaces like this um where there's no real focus on that like in the game you're not looking at specific kinds of bottles i mean that's not the point but um sometimes i like to have like to attempt um trying little details like that and when i zoom out it kind of limits me to doing it on things like barrels and chairs and you know the bigger things the tables rugs um stuff like that so yeah, um, I didn't. I don't think I went with this one, but uh, because it was just the little, like the layout was a little weird. But if I put more time into any of these, I'm pretty sure they could have worked, honestly. Um, and this was just me trying two different camera angles for the uh, cutaway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Oh wait. And then this was obviously like where I ended up going. So um, or originally the this um, hearth, I, I guess I think it's called a hearth. This was just going to be angled like that, but it feels a little weird, right? Like um, because the it, it, it's kind of like a focal point, but the focal point isn't facing the viewer. You know, it's kind of like you're seeing it from a side angle and like it makes me want to lean to the right to try to see what like more about the shape and, and stuff like that. So that's the whole reason behind me turning it, you know, um, for uh, 45 degrees um, and moving it more a little a little bit more to the the center of the the um, image. So if you look in this one. Um, and a lot of this stuff is pretty obvious to like anyone who went to my school. <laughs> Everyone's probably like critiquing my 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 thought process right now, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that was a one. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, this one, this one, I learned a major lesson from. Um, the and a lot of these like we had to i had to rush over so many so many things because uh we were just starting to run out of time and and uh things weren't looking too hot so a lot of details i had to run over um but here's the uh that's the this is the raw file so so like the uh yeah oh god so yeah raw file and then um and then the lines, the line work, personally, my favorite part. I don't even like coloring stuff that much, honestly, outside of painting. But I, I, I'm like, I, I look, I, I added so many details that are almost like invisible because <laughs> of the colors, like, like uh, on the books and the like, I was writing like cool little stuff, like stuff you would never see. Like, look at this. You would never see this. Look, look at the, there's a, there's a cat boss in the ocean. 
yeah, it's just little fun stuff like that I was doing. Um, probably could have used my time a little better. I was trying to like, I was designing like little card fronts and backs for like the, the stuff. And this was something that Oveen put in as a uh, uh, Easter egg. But um, she, the the cat's dick was out, so I covered it with a leaf. Um, yeah, a little quest board or something like that. Uh, let's see, no, another notice board. Um, that was pretty much it. I think when I came to like personalizing things, I just kept it to the foreground because that's probably what you would see the most. Um, like I said, as things get further away, they kind of just get smaller and smaller. So like you just fight it. You're you're kind of fighting an uphill battle because you have less space to make an item more unique. So I think that was the 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 ex explanation I was aiming for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this that's the lines, and uh, I'll show all the pr oh my god dude this is the one that almost killed like straight up i did so many iterations for this it was ridiculous um i wonder if i have it on here no i don't okay uh <laughs> yeah uh okay uh yeah oh. all right let me see open okay so with the, oh wait, no, this isn't the one. Okay, so with this tavern, right, I tried, I think six or seven different layouts and, and I, like ideations, but um, I kept I kept running into the same issue where I was told like it wasn't, it didn't feel like the person could move through the space a little freely, like freely and stuff like that. Um, which, I mean, it's always up to the person, like how they want the space to look. In Pathfinder, I've seen this problem so many times, but like it looks cool enough, so who cares, right? It's kind of like how people in games or whatever, uh, you can have your you know, you know your sword hanging on your back, but realistically, like unless you're doing it the way that Shadow Frax or not Shadow Frax, uh, Shadowversity, the way he does it, um, where the hilt, the, the the sword and the hilt is kind of a little higher up, so you can pull it, ex you know, extend your arm all the way out of the sheath of the sword, and then you can you know, wield the sword or, or equip the sword from your back. You get what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, Shadow Frax is rust, not, not medieval. Um, yeah. So I, I can't, I played, uh, with this idea of having, you know, two, uh, entrances to like a second floor where there would be like rooms and stuff. And like, you would come in and then like in the middle spot, you could look up and see the little balcony of the second floor and people could be looking down and there could probably be like small tables around you know and all that kind of stuff uh that was the idea behind this and then like it had like this open kitchen slash bar thing so you could see them like cooking the food here this was the idea behind that uh like they could cook it on an open flame um i thought that was pretty cool but i <laughs> i guess uh I don't I don't think my teachers like that too much um, I think he said it was it was kind of like a modern idea which started to bug me but I mean hey it, no design is perfect like I said um, this was another one so like same idea but like a little a little more like condensed um, a lot less you know empty space just in the middle I guess, and it was kind of still here, but, um, you know, I, I was thinking like, okay, there, this could be like a small er place that, that could have, you know, a lot of stuff going on here and you have like a little open storage room here and then like a, a closed storage room here. Um, you know, some storage under the stairs, some storage in the corners, um, some tables around the outside, like maybe these are like game tables and it's kind of got two entrances or three entrances technically or yeah no two entrances to the center spot um i thought that was pretty cool i still think these are pretty cool um if i expanded on them a little more um and this was just a different camera angle so this was more of a zoomed out you know typical three quarter kind of um and then this one was a little lower with the camera angle and a little turn to the left um, same with this. This was kind of like the typical, um, the typical like three quarter, but 
it was kind of running into the same problem that the kitchen had where it was not facing the viewer enough so i, I turned it you know and i felt like this one looked pretty good <laughs> i like like every time i finished one of these i thought it was pretty decent um it's just block ins though and then this is ultimately the closest that i got or the closest to the finish that i got um i thought it would be cool if like the bar it was like a bar slash you know open kitchen like i just thought that was the coolest coolest thing and uh that one got shot down pretty quick <laughs> i mean it, it always depends right like if you're a concept artist it's not always about what you want it's about what the client wants so and, and this one it kind of showed me that i could iterate if i had to you know going through different ideas um regardless of like what i want personally being able to try to match what a client would want um but everyone agrees everyone can pretty much agree that i i iterated way too much like i should have just stuck to an idea and just went with it um i actually got scolded eventually not scolded but like he's like my teacher's like how 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 long do you have left for this project like are you gonna keep you know <laughs> are you gonna keep uh changing it you know and i was just like you know what you're right and then that's why i had to rush it in the end because i started running out of time yeah um oh, there's even more holy shit dude even in the two hour version of this video like i forgot that there is another two versions of the oh my god all right so these these are the other two so like there's this one so i was thinking like it'd be cool like you come in you see the bar area here and then there would be an open kitchen you know and this is the same thing actually this is literally the block and i used for my kitchen um this is the exact one. I just reused it for the kitchen since I didn't end up using it um, in the tavern. But I thought it'd be cool if, like, you know, there was, like, some guy, like, there was, like, a chef or something who was cooking in front of everyone. Like, it's a show, you know, like, everyone sits and kind of watches as he cooks. And then, like, there's a guy who runs and, like, gives it to everyone. And uh, right here, you'd have the people, you know, drinking and stuff like that. Ran into issues as far as, like, functionality-wise uh you know how are you how is this person going to get to these seats which i think is pretty like you would it, it's like those couches at, at some restaurants where like you can only get into it by one side so basically everyone would like like before this person got no like no one would sit here before the person who sits here got to their seat you get what i mean like it's kind of like that but i see what he means like you could use some more space back there so like that was that and done um eventually i got rid of the idea of the um the open bar you know the open um kitchen in general um i figured that i think towards the end i was figuring that i already had a kitchen that i was going to do so i didn't want to have the same values um in the tavern as i had the kitchen i didn't want them to look too similar that was my main worry or concern i guess um and uh i eventually went with the idea of you know three giant barrels full of wine or whatever people drink right um <laughs> and then like you know you go up to the bar and you can order you know whatever whatever lion they would probably i mean who knows right like it could be a blue lion green lion who cares like it could just be you know grandmaster lion uh expert lion like I don't, who knows right like who could know these things it's, it's like a block in um there's so many ideas that could have come out of it and, and obviously uh here's some more like flat sketches that i did for it so like just doing top down views this one was going to be massive i had to abandon this one that's actually the one i put the most time into um this giant like you know entry and then like and i took the floor plan kind of from a bar like it was it was influenced by um a club right but i i, try, I was like huh i wonder if i could like m medievalize this uh so like i, I kind of changed a lot you know and uh the, you know you come in through here there's a front desk there's like some kind of meeting room or something you go here and um up some stairs to the right you know there could be seating areas that go up to stairs again to like more like higher up seating spots and then same with this spot but it would stop here and then like you have an open bar area here and like uh 
you know, something here, but like this was going to be like some kind of grand entrance, like a grand reveal, right? You go down here while you're walking down this little hallway spot, you can hear the commotion of like, you know, whoever's in the bar, the tavern. And then you turn and you just see everything at once. You know, you see the stairs going up. Uh, you see, you know, you see the second floor, you see the bottom floor, um, all that kind of stuff. And then I just kept, uh, you know, because you can get so many ideas like that just from a top down sketch. It doesn't always have to be some like crazy, like, you know, uh, at least for yourself. I think, yeah, at least for yourself, as long as it makes sense to you and you can look back and understand what you were trying to go for. I don't think it needs to be anything crazy, but it's always cooler to see a three quarter view than this. <laughs> I, I think at least uh, or maybe I'm, if you're able to sell it, maybe I'm just selling it well, maybe I'm selling it badly. But but um, I think it's always better to see like a three quarter view personally. But like I said, um, your boy was min maxing. So I was trying to just get to the design as quick as I could. Uh, so, yeah, I was thinking about the rooms. Um, it was just kind of getting like low quality because it's so zoomed in um you know writing notes uh trying different like uh space like space shapes and and uh small medium large type things uh, so this was the small version medium version large um the blue was for like the second floor right so like you know an outer deck on the second floor where there's tables and people are sitting you know I just thought that would be interesting to try to tackle in a medieval setting. I don't know. Uh, you know, you in fantasy, you got people who have pauldrons where they like they have spikes on them and they raise their arm and they'd like literally just shank themselves in the neck. But we can't have an open. <laughs> I'm going to have a heart attack, man. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was my idea with that. And then like this was some like quick like front view type type thing that I was kind of experimenting with. So, yeah, like I said, this this really taught me, like, because I think somewhere deep down, I was just trying to go for the perfect design or whatever, but I didn't I didn't get there. Obviously, that does not exist. Uh, so, yeah. And then this was the the King study. Probably. I don't know why, but it's probably one of my favorites from these uh, from the three of these so far. Um, basically, like it was described as a king who had a cluttered office and I, I didn't want to go with the idea of you know papers being all over the floor too much so i tried to include scrolls instead you know scrolls that are like gilded and, and, and trimmed with like gold and whatever and this one actually went through a lot of uh, iteration too so i can show these real quick i gotta close these files so i don't uh so i don't keep going into the same file uh, one, two, three, four. I think for the most part, these are the ones that that I went with. So originally, this started. It looked like this, and uh, while it didn't really like the blocking, while it didn't really, um, this is a, something else I want to bring up too. A lot of these models are also like off Sketchfab. They're they're free, like free models. Um, some of the things I did make, like this cabinet thingy, I made these this little chest thingy and this table i made that this <laughs> is like a simple block in this little table i made that but i kit bashed like the the bottom of it I, I was like dude i'm not making that screw that like i said you only have so much time and like with these like <laughs> your textures get all stretched because like you you're just trying to like get it to work like you, you no one knows how to like we're not 3d modelers right like we can make stuff to a certain degree um but like overall like when it comes to textures dude, especially back then i think i understand it a lot more now but you can see like some of the textures are just stretching all over the place because like you'd reuse textures on some things just to get that like same kind of material um yeah i made these little things for all it's worth and the door i believe or no, no, that's kid bash. And the the castle or whatever, the the building I made that. But I mean, come on, let's be honest, not like anything groundbreaking. But originally the idea was to have like you know this square tower because that's what it was described as in the book. So I didn't see any problem with you know going with a literal square tower. 
but then I was told, you know, it's a little, it's a little boring. So I was like, okay. So, um, I started, you know, I went from this block in and I started looking up round towers and like hexagonal towers, which I probably should have went with the hexagonal, but ultimately I thought, okay, well, we'll do the round tower. So I started over and, and started making the round tower. And then, um, towards the, towards this, I was like, dude, this feels really weird. And, uh, I started running into a lot of problems with like the, the mesh like the mesh not like computing and stuff like that i don't know what word you would even use like they were like hollow spaces where i try to um where i tried to boolean like boolean the space and then like it started getting all glitchy where the textures weren't working and i didn't want to have to manually go in and like add all the textures you can see out here like the, the bricks are the size of my house <laughs> like like uh, like what the uh so yeah it's stuff like that like it, it it, it, the textures weren't being consistent uh that's kind of like the downside of using blender for like con uh concept unless you really like familiar uh, familiarize yourself with like you know all the different aspects of you know stuff like that it just really depends on how much blender you want to use versus um you know traditionally 2d digital and digital sketching or whatever um, but obviously with the round tower, I had to go back and find more, more reference for that to make sure that it like, you know, I had, so I went from studying a lot of square towers like this, you know, stuff like this. And it's not even like a tower, like where you would have a study, but I'm looking at the exterior of it and how I can maybe change some of it to be a little bit more like a, a study in one way or another. Holy shit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um. Yeah, so I had to basically go and regather reference so that I, I pretty much had to start this whole thing over. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was using a lot of reference from the uh, 18th century, uh, 18th and 19th century. Because um, the, the, back then, what they would do instead of pictures, because they don't have pictures at the time, they would take paintings um, and paint like rooms and interiors, still lives, stuff like that. So that was their version of the camera. So I just figured, okay, well, I can just look at past illustrations of certain things and use those for reference of uh, set dressing of the time period. So that's what I did there. Like, this is so cool, dude. They were cracked out. Like, can you, if you actually think about it, dude, like when it comes to like the Renaissance era with artists, dude, like, the fact that these guys can just sit down and like even the the the, the, the quality is low like is in terms of like the picture right the file but even then it still looks so nice like oh my god man dude i wish man, dude. i'm gonna nerd the fuck out i swear man i um yeah okay um so yeah, I went from a square tower and kind of zoomed out a little bit, but I started, like I said, I, I started noticing that I was losing that like, kind of personal feeling to it. Um, as I added like half of a round tower here and like had the space kind of spread out and some kind of observation deck uh, being built here and then the stairs that lead up the tower. So like how would that structure work? Things started to get like really... There were a lot of problems that I was introducing that had to be fixed and I didn't I, I wasn't necessarily getting more time to deal with those things. So I had to shrink it down from this again, which eventually got me to a zoomed in um, version of the room and uh, just left it at that, you know, um, and, I, and I don't know if that's a strength or a weakness for my portfolio necessarily, like not showing the exteriors and stuff like that more. Um, um, this is something I'm still trying to make sense of, like what things to show. Like I said, uh, like I, I look at a lot of concept art. I don't think this is like representative representative of what you would do. Like simply, I'm pretty sure there were so many concepts for this thing, this room, but it works because in the style of uh, Pathfinder, you're not like seeing the exterior of the building beside, like outside of uh, where you enter inside. And uh, on the inside, it's always a square. Like I was playing, I was playing, um, boulders gate one and i noticed this too i was just like dude it's just a square in here like 
uh, I think even in Divinity, even in Divinity, I think it was. Let me look. I have to look now because I'm curious. Um, one sec. Okay, so a lot of times, a lot of times the, the, um, I mean the exterior, like this is kind of like a cutaway, right? Like this is three quarter top down. Um, but I'm trying to find a bit, an interior. Why is it so hard to find an interior, man? Wait, why is it scrolling down? Okay. Such a good game, dude. I almost, I just got chills. Such a great game. Man. Such a great game, honestly. Like, like actually, it's su like, dude. I would love to work on it on on something like this, man. There's a, there's another game too. Um, if you guys don't know, like, there's a there's this game called War Tales. I haven't played it yet, but it looks really fun. It looks like it could be really good. It's kind of like the same style of top down. I actually applied for a job here, um, because I thought like maybe my skills could, you know. Maybe they could use, you know, your boy. Uh, but I ultimately got turned down. It is what it is, but I'll be back. <laughs> I will be back. It's stronger and faster than ever before. I don't know what words you would use for that. But, uh... But just... Wait, wait, let me see if they... Yeah, see, it's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of got that top down. Oh, dude, why? Yeah, it's kind of like Divinity, but it's way more zoomed out and way more. I guess. I don't, know, dude. I would love like, I have to. I'll get to this stuff later, but yeah, this is an interesting game. I I, I don't I haven't played it yet, but but uh, when I'm applying for job, I I try to find as many games in that same like era or, or like area that I can find like. I've looked at so many comp but like it, as far as like where I think cuz okay it, it comes down to um for me at least and these are probably not the right crit crit uh crit dude, I'm using big words that I've never used in my life uh big cr uh, criteria is that the right word um I don't know if like I'm being too strict on as far as where I apply but sometimes I don't feel like my skill level is there yet right it's in terms of like um designs and stuff could be right could be wrong who knows i'm not perfect <laughs> but uh it, it's all it's always a mix of that and there actually being a position to apply for like if i look on here right and i say uh scroll to the bottom because for some reason they want the careers to be at the bottom um and you look at you know obviously i apply for the general application but if you look at the job offers a lot of the times it's uh senior roles like say i was a, a game designer or something like okay well fuck a lot of times it's always like lead roles i don't i don't know why this one's a little bit more general and like uh friendly towards like uh i guess not a lead position but like for the most for the most part like I, i'll look at some of these and it's all it's only lead like lead this lead that lead constant i know my skill level is not that high yet so like I like it's like what would I apply not yet but I'd I'd bookmark the page for when I can, um, and a lot of times I I just apply through the general application part but uh one of my friends gave me some advice as far as like applying he's like what's the worst thing that could happen they they can just say no, so, uh getting used to that getting over that that kind of I guess fear of rejection in a way, um has been a big part of uh post fcd like let's just say that um but yeah this is probably one of my favorites um yeah like i said lines are still there um yeah i included one of the work in progresses like i said presentation is everything i don't think this is the best presentation at all i think this looks really bad actually i should probably take this part off i don't, I don't know dude um 
you really find out how like god am i really about to start shouting out people in my class dude once i call one person out i'll feel like garbage for not calling out everyone else because everyone in that class was pretty cracked except for some people who didn't really uh take it that seriously but um uh, even sometimes they were cracked too i won't lie uh okay so we have okay so this was pretty this is pretty simple straightforward this was just a, a cart like a wagon or something just kit bashed this one and uh added in some like personal touches onto it uh took props from here and there so like if it, it feels like i guess it feels solid to me a little bit um but overall like it's like i don't want everything to be just like for my designs i don't want everything to just be kit bash you know or, or like 3d assets that are free online everything will start to look the same right it's like once you start using like it when it comes to barrels and like mundane objects i don't really care but um usually i try like if i'm gonna use a lot of those kinds of things like in an environment or something i'll try to make the building or the the structure itself a little bit more uh original you know to kind of compensate for that time that i saved through using assets um but yeah lines god i love lines way better than way <laughs> way more than just i feel like the color like i have to find a, a, a sweet spot where like the lines and all that stuff don't get lost in the color i don't know but yeah like i said a lot of these things were at, i had to just rush over because we were running out of time um this is an asset like our, our prop page i guess for the to, the study so the whole idea behind this was these were things that you would probably see throughout the study that would probably like i was thinking from the perspective of a player like going into the study maybe it's like a quest or you're a thief who knows but these are objects that would probably catch your attention you know outside of the mundane books and and, and um dusty you know whatever scrolls there's other lines for it um i think with this one like i said i just feel like i rushed so much that like a lot of details a lot of things that could have been handled a little better were just like if I were to say one thing for one, if I were to describe my portfolio in maybe one word, I would I would feel like it would be rushed. I, I like obviously like anyone will do better with more time, but uh, there's no industry where you're kind of encouraged to take that time. You know, you're always on a crunch or whatever. Like I even I even started playing around with small details that I probably shouldn't have, but I started thinking about like what if like these chests like the king was super paranoid so he had like different different keyholes for different locks so like every lock had like a different key that was like weirdly shaped so i was thinking as far as that it's like as far as like a prop page for having like all these crazy looking keys um that would like you know go into these drawers and stuff like that uh but obviously you know time time starts uh ticking and uh, those ideas go straight out the window because at that point, you know, nothing's worse than not finishing something you spent 60 hours on or, or 80, even more than that, honestly. So these are from, oh my God, this is going to be a two hour video too, dude. Um, God. So like now, now I'm kind of nervous because I don't want to start rushing over everything. My, my voice is starting to hurt um but i'll try to take my time and kind of resist the urge to to like fly over certain details um but yeah this was the second project so i kind of got i think this one is the best looking for me personally as far as like understanding where i want what direction i want the uh rendering and stuff like that to go in um it was just a simple log cabin i was just thinking about it in terms of uh what kinds of things like i didn't want it to seem like a happy-go-lucky like you can leave your door open type of place but i wanted it to be like you know you're gonna put barricades up you're gonna try to keep your place safe from wild animals like bears and stuff that would probably try to eat your whatever you're growing i was thinking in terms of hunting where like you would have bear traps and, and your you know your spikes and you would have places where you set up your your uh, archery stuff so like um 
the girl is described as an archer who, um, or, or like, yeah, I think it, it's an archer. She's an archer who has a hunting cabin with uh, a lot of studies of plants and sketches of plants. Now, I, I didn't really push that part too much. Like, I have spaces where she studies and mixes stuff together. But as far as, as far as, um, you know, plants and ske like sketches of plants being all over the place, I don't think I really handled that part too well now that I'm looking at it. Um, I think it's because, like, my, my, I didn't only design the cabin i was thinking about the things that would be outside of it too a little bit when it comes to plants i think i suck it i just i just blo like i just straight up just drew all this stuff and i was just like dude hey, i'm sure they'll get it <laughs> but uh yeah bear traps you know setting up the traps fixing uh broken tools i was thinking about it from the perspective of a player you know like you would upgrade this over time or something like that. And, you know, eventually you can have little small farms attached to the side of the building. Like you could custom make, um, you know, Minecraft style. Like if you wanted to build something on the side of your house, you just do it. So I was thinking like, okay, well, maybe she, uh, you know, she has like, you know, plants on the side of the thing. And uh, she's working on, you know, practicing her archery more. So like she has these things getting ready to go and take them out to the forest and set them up so she can practice her archery uh little cages for catching animals or whatever um a fishing rod you know some buckets for when she fishes and she likes apples or something so you know where she sleeps there's like a basket of apples so she can always grab one <laughs> you know stuff like that um uh i just <laughs> i put uh, you know some squirrels in uh that that look a little jank but hey I like I like I said I don't think I don't I really don't think concept art is about like you know obviously you don't want a concept to look bad because no one wants to look at something that's like badly rendered um, for too long you know people just look at it and kind of move on but but uh, if you're able to make it a little bit more interesting a little bit more um, artistic and, and and fun to look at all the small details well that can also lead to you know if you hand it to a 3d modeler if they're interested in what you made like they, they'll look for those extra details and try to add their own spin to it you know who knows um so yeah i was thinking about uh i was thinking about that but i was also thinking like oh yeah it's a portfolio piece i forget like i should probably try to touch up a lot of this stuff but uh yeah i'm still i'm still like really weirded out by like cloth like I, usually when it comes to cloth and like organic shapes i just i don't know right now like i said like it's really hard to uh to make those things i i, ha I have to get more mileage with that for sure um it's gonna take a lot of studying but i'll, I'll get there i'll get there um yeah these are the lines for it so yeah it's pretty simple Pretty simple lines. Um, yeah. Man, I really... Oh, goodness. But yeah, that's how I kind of pushed myself a little bit um, in school. Like, if it was the cabin, I, I was like... I was like, dude, a cabin is going to be so boring for me. Like, I'd rather do the cabin and then also have the exterior. So it's kind of like half cabin half exterior you know um environment or whatever obviously like i don't have a lot of experience doing environments but i always tried to consider and it was always fun doing that you know considering what the space outside would look like um because i was thinking like i don't think you would have a a stove or, or, or like a fire burning inside of the building so you'd probably have it outside and outside it, it would be a little safer to like burn a fire um and uh yeah I, I i didn't want i also didn't want the cabin to look too um too i guess advanced i guess you could say like i did i wanted it to still kind of seem like it could be built by one person um but i didn't want it to look like you know over maybe the course of years not like like something that was added on to rather than than um you know all built at once by multiple people um 
that's kind of like where I came up with the idea of like adding things on the outsides and and having things hanging in random spots because it's like like you know just stuff <laughs> stuff piles up and uh, the plant pots were like to uh, show like she's you know maybe she sits on the porch and adds the seeds to all the plants from the sack or whatever or to the plant pots from the sack you know on the porch you know so maybe throw some to the squirrels or something like that and then uses this little wagon over here in the in the corner the small wagon uh that's from like a lot of this is from um uh what's the kit called the medieval marketplace kit from kit bass 3d uh if you guys were wondering but yeah, I was thinking like maybe she could be sitting on the porch and then she gets done. She walks over here and like starts to plant the seeds from the um, or, or put the dirt into the, the planting spots. Uh, it's funny, like <laughs> I think my teacher, uh, one of my teachers were ask, was asking me, you know, like how come why would she uh, why would she pit, you know, these planters here when she's surrounded by dirt in the forest? And it's uh, it's kind of like the same question you ask about, like, you know. Um, I don't know, like, why do farmers do that in the first place? Why would they have, like, a log around it? It's kind of just aesthetic, I guess, or, like, it makes it more pleasing. It, it's easier to locate where you have that thing um, placed. Um, maybe it's for convenience, so you don't have to bend down every time you go to, you know, piss stuff in it. You can stand up and still have access to those things. There's all kinds of reasons that can go into that. Um that's not to say like my teacher was like stupid or something like it was just it was a very valid question that made me actually think about it on a deeper level um yeah um so yeah that was this i think that's everything i had to say about that one uh let's see yeah this was a cinematic shot that i had for it i really like this space here i don't know what i don't know what i did I think that was like a happy accident or something, but I felt like this space right here really hit the mark for where I want, you know, um, things to almost look almost. It, it really like, it speaks out to me. <laughs> it speaks out to me. Um, but yeah, this is just the interior of the cabin. So like from a first person view, uh, so yeah, I thought that was pretty nice. I tried to, um, like with these, with these pouches and stuff like like i said everything's a 3d model pretty much so like i tried to personalize them a little bit by like having the stitching on them and and uh you know different things connected together from you know maybe old shirts or something like that still kind of really um it's still really challenging to add like graphics onto cloths and stuff like that so it, i it, it kind of feels a little weird but uh it's, it's something that I have to learn more about. Uh, I don't know why I added some like like red bottles in the foreground. I don't know the. I think that was the, just to like hint at the fact that she made like the potions or something like her. They're brewed from this, but there's no place that shows where like, you know, the potion bottles are being like set up to do all that kind of stuff. There's just the storage and the general powders and um, she was described as having a bow. Uh, also, but I thought it would be interesting if she had a crossbow. Like, uh, there, there, there was no like. I was just like, ah, oh, she could, she could have a crossbow. Why not? Um, and in this one, I kind of added some sketches around that, that kind of like hinted towards different things and aspects of her life a little bit, like setting up a, like I don't know why someone would sketch these things just randomly, but you know, I mean, uh, that's just I guess that's just what I was feeling at the time. And then, and then another thing I came up with that I don't know if it really worked here um, was like the idea of her having like a latch on the door that she could like lift up and then just hook in right here. Um, see, that, that does make sense, right? But like the fact that you would have to move everything off the desk to open that window and set it all up again seems really tedious. That's probably something that I would not do. Um, I probably, but same here. You know, you would have to, to to close these doors at night. You would have to take everything off of the table and kind of, you know, store them in another spi uh, space. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. This space right here is actually really challenging, too. 
I think that's probably why like I paid the most attention to it because I, I knew it was kind of like the focal point, right? Um, but like I was trying to figure out a way to separate. I don't know why the square is still here. I yeah. Uh, I was trying to find a way to separate, you know, the foreground from the background. So I was thinking like, like maybe it could be one of those th those things where it's like raining outside and it's really foggy and like the inside is super clear and like separate it that way. There's so many different ways to tackle that, but I hope I did a good job trying to ta uh, separate the background from the foreground here, because without that, the the all this stuff could blend in together so easily, uh, without that separation and desaturation there. Um, this is the the uh, line work for it. So, uh, yeah. So even with the lines outside, I I made them slightly less opaque. Uh, I turned down the opacity to try to make them less prevalent or, or um, less uh, to, so they're not as strong as the foreground so they kind of get the lines kind of get weaker with the distance so yeah and the patterns are pretty much just skewed in the place of the the carpet yeah, I, I haven't found a better solution for that yet but I'm looking for one um, so yeah here's another like super far out cutaway um similar to the log cabin but a little more more so uh, as far as the zoom out goes hold on i'm gonna take a bite out of this cookie i'm not gonna chew into the mic so just give me a second uh please stand by Okay, I think I'm done. Wait. Okay, now I'm done. <clears throat> um, okay. <clears throat> okay, now I'm done. Um, okay, so this was the marketplace. Um, doesn't really ring too much as a marketplace for me, if I'm being honest. But the inside, uh, I just wanted to show, like, there's a bunch of wares and stuff like that being sold on the inside of the building. And and uh, maybe things are being transported like from the from the wagon outside you know with this little transport thing and put on the racks to sell to whoever who knows you know uh, i saw this like this ring this ring with bells on it on some uh pinterest page and i was just like all right screw it like maybe that's how they notify each other of uh switching switching uh uh like renting stalls or something you know like you rent a stall for one hour and then every hour they spin this like ringing bell so it's like very recognizable from other bills um and then like this is probably where like some guy sits and takes takes account of like all the money or some of the money you know counts it or whatever there's like a little storage space up here didn't know i don't really, i don't really know the logic behind this part but like now that i think about it man i don't want to sit here uh I really don't want to sit here critiquing like hard critiquing my work but i'm just hoping that it that it makes you guys a little bit it gives you guys a better attention to detail um because there's like even no no matter how good you might think this looks like i always say th things can always be improved and i'm not but like like um critiquing my own work in front of a bunch of people and, and explaining why things aren't perfect in my own work isn't i'm not above that in any way you know um the last thing I want is for people to look at this and be like, oh, there's, it doesn't get better than this. <laughs> you know, like it, it very much does. And you should always keep your mind open to the fact that it does, no matter who made it, even though it might seem like it doesn't. Um, yeah. In a way, it's kind of like me shooting myself in the foot, but it at least shows, um, I hope it just shows that, that things can always be improved. And, and, um, I really hope that you guys like it regardless of what level of artist you are or, like how experienced you are or whatever um yeah my goal is just I, I just don't want you guys to view me in a way that that you think of you know some i i just don't want to come off as like some cocky uh uh self-absorbed you know type of dude you know like i'm i'm always trying to learn 
and, and sometimes it's too it's kind of self-destructive in a way because I never really acknowledge the strengths of anything I have. I always look at the weaknesses and like what I can do to make those things better. I, I don't think I've ever been satisfied with anything I did, I did at FCD, if I'm being honest. Um, a lot of the times I look back at it and I just kind of cringe. Oh, I won't lie. Uh, this is a bell tower that has like the guards in it. And, you know, maybe there's some guards in here and they ring this, these three bells and, makes like a, a sound that's different from that one so you know if they ring these three like it's like ding 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 like all at the same time they know it's like an emergency someone just stole something like check your pockets i don't know uh and this is like where he sleeps or something and you know like a little mapping or schedule spot uh i thought this would be cool to be like some kind of um logistic spot for like so like the when the when the um carriage or the wagon you know pulls into the area uh, there's probably like some, you know, dickhead right here that's like, oh, I need your papers, sir. You know, and like, <laughs> like you give them the papers and then they can actually start unloading the, the wagon. Who knows? It could be like, like it could be some cool like interaction on a quest, you know, like a, some guy that you don't like that you end up like, you know, you pick his pocket and then the top right of the corner, it's like you have you have committed a uh, chaotic neutral action. If you know, you know. That's from Pathfinder. Like every time I play my character, like I I, I play a, a lawful neutral. But uh, whenever I do something like chaotic bad or chaotic good, like it just pops up in the little uh, text chat. And it's like, oh, you just you just uh, you just did a uh, you know blah 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 action. You know, this is always some guy that makes you want to smack the shit out of him in these kinds of games. So like I just figured like well, why not like have like a little spot where you'd expect someone to be like that but who knows that it could be a nice person too um uh but yeah yeah and then there's like some like bounty board type thing there and then some stalls that are probably not open yet the challenge with this was that i couldn't usually market stalls have the the tarp or like the covering over it so the challenge with this was just kind of like i just had them as open tables because if i just covered them up like i couldn't see what's below them so that was the big thing that i did that's why i didn't make like the traditional um market you know so like this was probably the closest thing to a real stall that i had on here but like as far as the other ones i just didn't include the top part because i was just it, it would cover up too much information which was like i said the biggest challenge that's why i went with like a like a marketplace building that was maybe like owned by like a head head market person or something um, rather than, you know, a bunch of stalls, but, uh, I don't know, maybe the stall, the, the stall could be, yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways to get around that with design, but I don't think I, um, felt like I had the time at the time. So that's probably why I didn't do it, honestly, but yeah, some alcohol and stuff and, uh, some unloaded stuff from the carriage. Yeah. And like some kind of storage room with a bunch of like expensive vases in it and you know some dudes writing a letter about something else and he's got a big chest in here there's bars on the window so like people can't sneak through them um yeah okay uh and here's the lines for that yeah yeah, yeah. i always like the line so much better man i feel like i could have lowered the opacity of the uh floor the floor lines I, I don't think those should have the same strength as the objects themselves and the walls and stuff like that um what else what else is wrong here <laughs> i'm sorry guy i like i really just I, I can't stress it enough i don't i don't know what it is but i just don't want people to have like i don't i don't want people to look at other people's work and necessarily look for the wrong things first I would want for people to look at their own work and, and be able to see like the 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 weaknesses, but not to like beat yourself up. That's that's the thing that I that I struggle with is like I look for the right things where I can improve on them. But I, I get so caught up in beating myself up over like making those mistakes and stuff like that so much that it, it can be negative. And that's something I'm still balancing. But if it just makes people more conscious about like what they're making, how they can make it better. Um where the weaknesses could lie 
like it could it could really help you as far as like self directing your projects and and um not needing as much input even though input is good you know in some cases in most cases i guess but hopefully that makes sense i, I don't want to <laughs> yeah um okay let's close some of these cuz okay um let's see let's see this was a cinematic shot for this one. This one I pretty much made like almost in one one night. Like I think maybe like two nights because I, I, I came up with so many different layouts and, and I was just seriously running out of time so bad. Like a lot of this was like so last second. Um, I originally <clears throat> I originally wasn't going to do this, but uh, but I wasn't going to do this one. But I was like, what if I could pull it off? You know, like what if what if I could do it? and um well that's all she wrote i just i just tried to do it and whether or not it turned out good i mean uh not much to say about that one honestly i'm not gonna lie uh yeah i was just playing with the idea of uh, if i have to force myself to look at it and and, and break it down i would say um I, I played a lot with the idea of having the path kind of move your eye through the scene right so you kind of like look like this and, and you gradually go that way and then hit, like when you get here you look up over the rim of the cat uh the carriage and then you see the watchtower it's like oh cool that's that's pretty cool and then you see that funny enough funnily enough i think this this building i don't know what it was but like that part really like i don't know I felt like I felt like I really liked this part for some reason. This the the roof. I don't know why. Like I'm I'm so drawn to it. Um, but this one didn't have a real focal point. There there was no like this was so last second. Like I remember building this little house right here in 3D, and I was just like, dude, <laughs> this is so scuffed. Like I was like, I was just just trying to make it quick, you know. I know uh, there's the lines for it. So yeah. Uh, yeah dude i won't i won't even lie like there's some days where i i consider whether or not i should just take down like a majority of my work i just i like mm, we don't have to go there maybe i'll talk about stuff like that in another video um i just i really like like I, for this for this i i really um it took me a long time to get the courage, I guess you could say, to make this video. Because, like, there's so many things that I feel is wrong, just just blatantly wrong. Um, and it's it's somewhat, like, it's, it's very uncomfortable for me, personally. So, like, I always, that's, I feel like that's one of the main reasons my videos are always so spaced out. Because uh, it's always super uncomfortable for me to do these, but... But uh, people seem to enjoy them, and and I and I like to help people out, you know, and and um, yeah, I think it's worth it. <laughs> That's all I can really say about it. Um, so this is like some barracks, uh, barracks building, and uh, it has it has the uh, like a meeting room type thing going on here. Uh, you know, some storage. Oh man, I, I really like how actually I really like how I handled this this part for the um I don't know why. Like when it comes to furniture and stuff like that, it's really fun to just figure out like how they would be used and like what would be stored in there. I went through a lot of um a lot a lot of different iterations trying to figure out like if I were a general like what I would want a lot of drawers that are easily labeled um I would want, you know, I, I, I like, I put myself in that person's shoes and make a wish list, if that makes any sense. And just kind of go off of that. So I hope that helps, that, that advice helps. Um, or at least that, that, in, that, that uh, insight, insight helps. Um, man, these videos do a great job of helping me uh, uh, communicate better too, because uh, there's a lot of words that can be used in place of so like words that are so simple that just explain things way more, uh, way better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. I just kind of 
push myself to explain things a little better with these because I, I don't want to waste people's time. Um, this is like a giant map with a bunch of, uh, you know, areas that are probably under control, areas that are planning to get sieged or they're planning to get siege or to siege um, stuff like that. Some some like store uh, like upgrades like I, I was trying to gamify it like, oh, like, are you going to tackle this wizard? that no one's ever like seen and survived but somehow they got a picture of like it's just a quick picture but i wonder as far as the detail um if like i would have been better off just not <laughs> i always wonder like how if i sketch too much you know um and and if things should be you know tighter as far as line work goes there's like an among us island right here i don't know if you guys noticed that um you know mission statements or, or like like quests that have like the descriptions and like a picture that shows like what you could benefit from it so like this could be i don't know like if you do this like you'll get like some unlock for a new metal that makes stronger crossbows or new wood that can make better crossbow stocks i don't know um a bunch of military stuff that i just sketched onto the paper like as far as weaponry and siege equipment oh whoops Siege equipment, uh, weaponry, islands, layouts, stuff like that. Um, yeah, the foreground's just some scroll scroll storage, um, an open wardrobe that I kind of like repurposed into being another equipment storage unit type thing, and then this was just the barracks. So like it was just, you know, just the typical bear. I don't, I don't really think you can really design one of these things without them looking super generic. Um, Cause I, I feel like that's what most people do is like when, when they go for the weapons and the cool, you know, cool factor, uh, you just put weapons everywhere and it just looks <laughs> like a barracks, I guess. I don't know. And I just have some storage here, a storage room and uh, the balcony. Oh wait. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and I was towards the end of the project too. I was going, I was going to like add the exterior like I do with a lot of the projects, um, but I just started running out of time, so I just <laughs> I put rocks there. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, <laughs> but but you know, rocks they make everything work better. Uh, here's the lines for them. So yeah, I got I instead of drawing the rocks i just pretty much used the ao pass and just kind of it just i just left it there and i think that's why these rocks look a little bit more realistic than a lot of my other stuff is i just i used the ao pass and i just put it in there i think i, I turned the layer to multiply turn the opacity down a little bit and uh that's how these look a little less um less like cartoony or something i don't know but this whole page has like a grungy feeling to it i don't even know how that happened and a lot of the time went into a bunch of like trying to like try out different flags and stuff like when it came to the to the carpets i was gonna i just skewed like a, a texture in and i just ran a filter over it for time but but um for these like i just try i tried so many different flag like flags that could be like what represent war like a different house or something like that um I, I wonder if i have the page for that no i didn't make a page out of it but i just had a bunch of i had a page with like maybe maybe 15 or 15 to like 18 different variations of flags that i was trying out with just changing different aspects of them I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's like these arrows are pointed down, up, down. You know, I, I don't know why I did that, but I just didn't want the them all to look the same. I wanted them to maybe like, maybe there's a guy who you likes, like maybe there's like five generals, right? And like one likes maces, one likes axes or something. And then there's like the the whole thing, like the whole, the, the barracks uses the uh, griffin. And, and the griffin is meant to like symbolize like strength and like uh protecting like 
treasure, right? So like the city could be the treasure that the griffin is protecting, which is, with the griffin being like the military, if that makes any sense. Um, and this is just like the cinematic shot of the barracks room. So yeah, I, I had to change the uh, orientation of like, or not the orientation, but the positions of a lot of the weapons so that like it would read better from a first person view against the, the top down view. Cause if you see here, like a lot of the things are on the table, which wouldn't really read that well from like an eye level um, thing, unless the camera was a little higher, all the lines would start to kind of get flattened into one like blur you wouldn't really be able to tell what things were so i kind of changed the the orientation of the room a little bit to be a little bit more or less crowded because uh from this angle right if you're standing here if you're standing here and looking that way these tables can start to like flatten into each other so like they're all the same height and then they all have objects on top of them so all of those objects start to line up on front of each other and the silhouettes of things start to be unrecognizable so I tried to avoid that by um, just moving every table out of the way of other tables, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I have one in the foreground, right? I still have four tables, but one's right there, one's right there, one's right there, and then one's in the foreground. Rather than having, you know, this one in front of that one, and then all of these things getting blurred together. And this is the lines, the line layer. <sighs> um, yeah. I had scratches and stuff to like all the shields because I didn't want them to look all pristine. But like I said, like those small details, I don't really think pop up in the final version too much outside of like the, the very obvious scratches and stuff on the, some of them. And uh, yeah, if there's anything also like if you guys have made it this far, like. If there's anything you you want me to talk about, just leave it in the comments. And if I think it's like something I can uh, talk about, I'll just make it on, on my, like my next day off or something from work. Uh, but I'm not doing concept as a job right now. I'll talk about all that stuff later. Sadly, I'm not. But um, we'll see how the cookie crumbles. So I go, I'll, I'll get there eventually. I can't believe I just used that that statement. Um, that, that cookie crumble, that is like, so like 19 fucking whatever. <laughs> uh, so this, this one, um, this is a plain example of how things can overlap in a negative way. Right. If you look at, um, if you look at like how these, like you have a lot of things overlapping other objects, which is like sometimes what you don't want, like. For example, this book, these two books and this helmet, I could have moved it to the side a little bit so it wasn't in front of the barrel. You know what I mean? And then it would have been silhouetted kind of on its own rather than being in that weird space. It's just a bunch of small things like that that could have made this a lot better than it was. But like I said, you're rushing, so you just want things to look better. <laughs> Thanks, Ovin, for telling me that my scroll was transparent. I literally had a problem where like most of this stuff was transparent because I added a lot. I added these cabinets after the whole thing was pretty much done. So I ran up like I had to render that and I, I guess I forgot one of the layers. So like when I originally uploaded it, like the scrolls right there were just transparent and that was transparent. So you could just see the rug <laughs> and um, yeah, I did some sketches stuff like that and uh i had my friends like custom like D, &D map or, or uh uh that we use I, I put that in there i don't know what i don't know what like stuff was going on on this map but oh whoops but yeah i tried to make like some like kind of something that looked like a map uh fang was telling me like he's like he's like dude just he's like don't like like try to make it something that looks really good you know and i was just like i get what you're saying man but i don't have that much <laughs> like like I, I didn't say that but i was just thinking like uh man i i don't know if i could pull that off quick enough you know because if i try to do that like instead of a full map this would have been like like 
a quarter of a map <laughs> and then the rest of it would have been blank like i just wanted it all to be kind of sketchy and like consistent rather than like uh sharp and unfinished if that makes any sense it just all comes down to time management. I think, um, I don't, personally, as far as, like, my time management in FZD, I don't think I could have done much better. Um, I was literally ducking every invitation I got to hang out or, or like, anything just to try to, like, finish assignments. Um, it was, like, no, it, was, it wasn't personal, like, to anybody or anything like that, but, but, um, I just always, like, instead of going out to, like, eat and stuff like that, I just order food and stay in my room. <laughs> and just work <laughs> all day whereas like some people would go out and kind of you know eat food and go to the mall and stuff and i just couldn't do it like even if i did go i would have just been thinking about like the roast i'm about to get next the next day because i didn't finish my stuff and even then i wasn't able to really finish anything so imagine if i was actually like going out but a lot of the biggest uh, breakthroughs that i had were on those days that i didn't because i would push myself a lot harder on those days Cause it's like, dude, if you're not going to hang out with your friends, like you better make something out of this, <laughs> like, like something better happen here. Um, which usually would, uh, something would happen. Uh, I just don't really know where I put the finger on like what it was. So yeah, that's pretty much, uh, everything I did as far as FZD goes. Here's some things that I didn't upload though. Um, which were some cinematic shots that I was talking about earlier. I have I have one more I think that I can. Um, let me see. Uh, one more cinematic shot. Um. Yeah, this one was from the kitchen. I'll, I can put that one in there. Uh, I just don't know where the finished version of that one is. So the cinematic shots were kind of like our versions of paintings, uh, like a painting over the 3D and stuff. Um, I'll show you guys some of these because obviously I, I wasn't going to upload these. I, did, I don't even think I put these on Instagram because I, I was so embarrassed by this. <laughs> but uh, basically, like, so here's the raw 3D file for the uh, kitchen cinematic shot, right? So like everything's still kind of white box, um, but overall, like that was the kind of layout that I wanted for the cinematic shot. Um, a lot of things obviously could be changed here, but you know, you, you do what you can. <laughs> and then uh, this was, oh wait, I'll keep that one open so that I can compare the uh, two. So no, that's a different one. Uh, this one all right so this is the paint over and then this is the original 3d so you can see so you can see like this is the paint over that i did the quick paint over and obviously like there's a lot of things that i i kind of missed out on there was really bad file management so when it came to making changes um later down the line once i figured out what i actually tried was trying to go for i couldn't really do it and um you just don't want to gamble trying to figure those things out sometimes uh so like let me see oh this is another one so this is probably one of the closest ones i got to to finishing it well but didn't get too close there in my eyes at least for, for what i was aiming for um we'll get back to it don't worry <laughs> I'll, i will definitely be showing that uh but yeah basically like i tried to go for like some vegetables and stuff in the foreground but like i was just like and eh, like like what the like what am i what am i gonna pay here a cabbage like <laughs> i don't know um i don't know what i was thinking with these honestly i think i was just trying to hit a number instead of actually going for quality if i'm being honest even though i was consciously trying not to uh go for numbers and then uh yeah this is what i ended up with so it was a little rush this was my first attempt at a paint over um with what we'd been taught and i like i'd go back and watch some of things videos for like better context on how to do it but um some things just weren't clicking with me but i i got i think i got pretty close with this almost uh, i think i almost got pretty close um this is the study so this was the first cinematic shot and you can see it feels very crowded for the uh study and the reason for that is because the camera was not um 
the camera was too zoomed in the focal length was too uh high yeah it was too high the, the millimeters were too high and uh it just felt like really crowded uh same with this one this is another layout that i had tried before i got to this one and same thing it was just really crowded feeling uh so eventually i got to okay well i just guess i'll just go fuck myself then i guess i forgot to put it in here uh, one second one second i know it's somewhere it's, it's somewhere in here okay there's one and then where's the dude i in the two hour video i made i i know i pit the cinematic shot in here but I don't know where I hit the file for it um I guess this gets close enough but it's not quite that one's not going to show the difference as well because everything's not textured so I'm looking at it like off camera while I'm looking for it though here's a uh, here's some things I looked at for style reference um, I, I'm not trying to get like this realistic as far as like uh, renders go, but I really like this one by uh, Jordan Tuffin, I think. Oh, yeah, dude, I actually remembered his name. Jordan Tuffin. Um, I think this guy went to, F I don't know if he went to FZD or not, but I really like how clean this looks, you know? So like, I think this is something that I'm aiming for as far as like finishing. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, this is his name right here, so you don't have to like try and guess it. You can look it up on ArtStation while I'm looking this up, if you want. I'm not saying you have to, but shout out to him. <laughs> uh, where the, where the? I think I've done a good job going this video without cursing. I don't want to mess it up. I'm not an aggressive person, I swear. Uh, I just have a temper sometimes. I guess. Um, where the? F where is it? God, mother. F Might have choked. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to hear <laughs> any Indian students from my fucking class. No, I cursed my class uh where where is it man i had i had like the perfect picture that was like a before and after for that render and i lost it yeah i, I look at some of these sometimes like i look at the render style and i'm just trying to figure out like other like how other people handle like presentation and stuff like that so this was kind of like a style ref that i used a little bit but obviously not enough I shouldn't be roasting myself like that in 4K. All right, yeah, I, I didn't say that. Just take that part out. Uh, delete that. Just pretend I never said that. Oh, mm. I guess this is close enough. Yeah, this is close enough to to that. Um, one sec. Oh, this is another cinematic shot that I actually didn't put in. All right, all right so this is the uh, this is the cinematic shot that I had for the study so this is like the the uh block in like this is just raw 3d right and then with the paint over dude i'm i'm so over that wait where, okay hold on how many different files do i have open right now okay so that was the uh paint over or no no this is the raw 3d so you guys can look at that for a little bit and i'll just go back and find okay here it is so this is the paint over so this is this one kind of made wait no this isn't even the right one i'm gonna f i'll keep it in i'll keep this one this is this is the second so this is my first pass for paint over uh just please stand by i'm looking i'm looking stand by please please stand by where where okay so yeah this was this was the final uh painting 
paint over as, as much as I could pretty much before I had to uh is this even the final one dude yeah I think it is all right yeah so this was the final paint over so you can see like the difference between um like how I use the fog uh, as far as like setting the atmosphere from each other um, there are some things that I change between these two so like mainly the fog I think the fog is the biggest thing you notice as far as the change here um, like I said I just ran a filter over some of the paintings and this was the raw 3D so raw 3D slight paint over All right, I'll leave it on one. I'm probably pissing one of you guys off by doing that. So, raw 3D. Slight paint over. And then just kind of, I guess, polished paint over? I don't know the word for that. But yeah, I didn't upload that one either. Um, some of you guys are probably going to flame me in the comments, dude. I Listen. <laughs> I'm not toxic. I almost just said something toxic. I'm not going to say that. Um, here's another example. So I had this. I had this one. So I, where's the... Oh, oh. Maybe I can find the raw 3D for this one. I should have did this all before I got on video. But hey, it wouldn't be me if, uh, if I had some kind of hiccup. In the, oh, okay, wait. Is this it? Oh, look at that. All right. So this is the raw 3D. Um, let me close this one. So that's the like paint over kind of. So it's not big, like it's not like a huge change, but like you have light direction, some fog in there. And then um, after I kind of understood the uh, fog and all that kind of stuff a little better, I came to this one. So we have, wait, can I what, reorganize this? All right, so we have the raw 3D. We have the slight paint over, and then we have the final paint over with what time I had pretty much. This, I just want to point out that this thing looks like someone just carved it with a sword or, or a dagger or something. I don't know. But yeah, my favorite spot is probably like this area. I don't know why. Like this area looks really neat to me. But like I, like I said, when it came to 3D, like the biggest thing that always limits me is like organic shapes, like uh, the flags hanging down. It was really hard to make those things look natural. So it's probably one of the biggest things uh, that held me back with this one, but I, I think I learned a lot with this. Um, whenever I do my next paint over, I think it'll be a lot better. And this was just a quick block in for a fourth um, cutaway slash cinematic shot that I was gonna do. But I ran out of time for it. Um, and I can show like what the. Uh, I can show what the uh, what's it called? The blocking looks like in Blender. Right here. Yeah, so this is pretty much what the the layout was gonna be like. So if I turn this on real quick, hopefully it doesn't shut my PC down. Hope you guys see Timo right there just chilling in the block out. Um, so yeah, this was the block out for it pretty much, and I was just playing around with different shapes and um, layouts there's gonna be like a bridge like not a bridge but like a place where wagons and stuff was going through here to kind of like transport their stuff around the port and this was like going to another section of the city right um the, the layout of the boats and all that stuff i would have probably changed eventually if i had time but like it was uh yeah it was just like a bunch of buildings uh set up together um but yeah i had to abandon this one because started running out of time but you can see how things are, are like literally planned like behind the buildings isn't like a real city or anything it's just for the cinematic shot um and if i actually had to then i would go and actually go in and make sense of everything 
um, and obviously like there's <laughs> you can see there's like a big space between these two areas because like you can't even really tell that that's not one solid ground but obviously like you put stuff in the foreground to kind of break that part up so like it wouldn't look so not in the foreground but like in the area like it wouldn't just be a flat like nothing here like it'd be you probably have like some kind of market stalls that are probably poking into this little area here um some carriages going through here um wagons uh carts uh on the top you probably have like posts for like guards um th actually that's what this is right here this like building was going to be like a guard tower type thing and it's going across it was going across into this building which was probably like some kind of office or, or naval like you know the ships land and then they go in there submit the paperwork they know what's like same thing with the marketplace pretty much um yeah i had to uh yeah i had to let it go there's actually another file i did too but uh i forgot where that one went but it was uh basically of the exterior for the kitchen for the first project that i had in term three so yeah um that's pretty much it as far as uh you know school stuff goes i think i showed it pretty much everything from term three um but yeah so like post post school i think if, if any of you guys are like studying in school right now i think the biggest thing you want to watch out for is like the kind of uh emotional wreck you'll be after you graduate and when you're looking for a job and all that kind of stuff it's pretty draining um knowing what you're qualified for what you're not qualified for it always helps to have a group of friends that you can rely on to give you solid in, um advice like thankfully i have you know my group of friends from um fzd to kind of help ground me sometimes because i always kind of get caught up in and thinking like man like if i can just learn how to do this like so many i'd have so many less problems you know stuff like that um and uh actually having to you know be patient is probably one of the biggest things i've learned since i graduated you know having to come back from getting to do all that and then not have a job that that's related to it um right away um i think one of the biggest things that i've learned is just the patience in terms of that like obviously i got a job that's not related to it yet but um in the meantime you know uh on my time on my days off i spend that time trying to uh you know focus on like a personal project and and push uh you know push things that i i noticed were lacking and and kind of look at a bunch of um a bunch of uh what's it called a bunch of reference in, in terms of like how concepts are done for different projects like here's some concept art from pathfinder like i could a hundred percent do this but i need to show that i can do that um, more than I already have in that style, you know, like, um, so I've been playing the game a little bit, uh, and, and noticing like some consistencies that I've kind of, uh, I'm kind of, you know, paying a lot more attention to now. Um, so like whenever I find these things, like I just try to think, and, and you can see like these things aren't crazily polished as long as it gets the idea across, like the perspective isn't even perfect, but it makes sense. To whoever's like looking at it it's like oh does that look neat uh does that look like a nice shape does this look like a nice shape they're just quickly going through ideas i think this is probably what real concept art looks like you know it's not always these highly polished uh pieces and that's one of the things that makes it so frustrating sometimes when i was at made it so frustrating sometimes when i was at fzd because sometimes instead of polishing one idea so much i wanted to move to other ideas and explore other things and that was kind of frustrating because it was like oh well you need portfolio pieces in it and in my mind i'm like dude i need to practice iteration and and uh making multiple designs like this because that's what my job is going to be um so yeah yeah i think this is really like i think this is pretty close to a, what like concept art actually is uh perspective off or on like what works if it ain't broke don't fix it like if you don't need to spend 10 like 10 hours polishing an idea you don't do it <laughs> you know like uh unless it's i mean unless it's specific to whatever project you're on um yeah if you guys have any tips as far as this stuff goes just feel free to let me know i'm 
always uh trying to see you know different perspectives on this kind of stuff but yeah um what was i saying yeah so like it, for me um like when i started the new job that that wasn't related to concept art i you know super depressed uh, i mean like it's it's pretty it's pretty hard to go from uh school into not, something that's not related but as long as you keep taking those steps towards um high like heightening the chances of you getting hired in that field i think you'll be fine you know um it's not a race no one's taking score just just try to do what you you know what you set out to do and uh as long as you're consistent i think that's the most important thing consistently um uh, for me I recently noticed that it's I do a lot better when I'm around other people who are you know knowledgeable and doing the same thing you know so like on the days that I want to spend more time you know drawing and, and doing the blender and all that kind of stuff uh, I try to join more discords and recently I've been working on this thing I haven't touched it in a while though because during my work days I tried to uh, come home and relax instead of doing that but on my days off this is how I like to spend my time is just messing around with uh other ideas so like i was just i had this thing blocked that blocked in um pretty much and uh some there's two assets in here from from a kit but i didn't or, or no so the barrels the chairs this tarp and this tent but everything else i built um it's not it's nothing crazy like it's just a like for the draw over and all that kind of stuff uh, simple shapes like I said before but like I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to what makes like this is the uh, eye level view or whatever but like the original cameras up here let me see yeah so this was like the the angle that I was trying to capture it from so I'm obviously like making changes as far as that goes but uh, I'm trying to see like you know what what I want this thing to really look like and um, I'm actually taking my time with it and because if it's going to be on a portfolio i don't want it to be something i rushed <laughs> like everything else pretty much but i mean fz that's how fzd is you know like you you have a certain amount of time and you just you're just scrambling to make the best of it um and you learn how to do that very well um but it's not for everybody you know it's uh, doing that is not for everybody that's for damn sure um but yeah it, it's like what i started to notice when i was working you know my other job and all that kind of stuff um, was like the more I think about where I'm trying to go and how I'm going to get there, the less I start to be, the, the easier it is for me to take a step back and actually think logically about, you know, the steps that are needed to get there, right? Like right now, I'm thinking about the fact that like eventually I want to save up enough money to, to um, look for a job where I have, you know, more free time to work on, you know, finding a job and building my portfolio and constantly working on new pieces and stuff like that and um you know eventually have a part-time job where like it's, it's part-time you know consistent money and then concept art is kind of because the whole thing with that is just i don't think it's very consistent as far as um when you're first starting you know so so the main thing for me when i got out of school was having you know stability you know saving up money and um uh, you know, use that to buy whatever I need to make my setup better or, or whatever programs, whatever, anything I need to um, basically uh, make make designing and all that stuff easier for me, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, but yeah, like as far as. Um, yeah, it's 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 OK, like I'm literally working at a. Uh, fact like a no not a factory but like a bakery on like shipping you know i spend eight hours lifting bread and pitting it on the back of trucks or like pitting it on in stacks for trucks for the drivers to come and complain to me about what's wrong with the bread or whatever but when i get home like it makes me happy knowing that i have a plan to get through that and that it'll pass eventually and you know, eventually be doing what I want to do, which is going to be making designs and being complained, <laughs> complained at about, I don't, who knows what, you know, whatever complaints come with that job. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it helps me to, because I know like when I'm going, like FCD has definitely taught me how I learn and how do I process like my emotions in times of, uh, you know, uncertainty for sure. 
uh, I want to say uncertainty because you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know if you, you don't know. Like, this is just another moment like that for me. And FZD taught me to, you know, just take the time and think and, and slowly try to make more sense of the situation and, 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 and um, not to be so emotional about it and be like, oh man, fuck this. Like, you know, like, um, but instead be like, all right, this does suck, but at least I have a plan to get through it. And I can always keep iterating and, and changing that plan to make it better. And when I talk about that plan to other people, maybe they can show me loopholes that are in it or, or like, you know, the problems with it where I can fall short with that plan. You know, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to listen to everyone's advice all the time, but like at least they'll show you different perspectives. And um, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much I think that's the biggest thing for for that I've taken away from this so far. Um, the, the crappy part about the job right so far is just the work hours. It's just, uh, I think I'm on eight hours. Like I'm, I'm on a normal schedule right now, pretty much. But, you know, as far as getting there, I have to have my friend take it. Cause if without my friend taking me out there, it's probably like a two hour commute, blah, blah, blah. Um, or, or three hour pretty much. But, but, uh, you know, he takes me there. I Uber back and just save the rest of my money because I'm already using Uber to get there, you know? So like, I, I might as well just try to save as much as I can. And, um, you know, just, just work towards whatever comes next. And, uh, if any, like I said, like if anything, um, uh, life is just not a straight line, you know, sometimes you have to take a step back to leap forward, whatever people say nowadays, it's just how it is like with fzd i didn't get to go there until i dealt with you know two years of taking care of my grandma and all the stuff that came with it you know so like it it doesn't it, it wouldn't it i've been through that process before so like it's like and in this time it seems a little easier because things are more a little a little bit more consistent as far as like how much control i have over the situation so i know what comes with it i know the the, the lows the highs or whatever so i'm a little bit more comfortable trusting myself to just get through those crappy moment moments knowing that eventually it can get better and uh yeah i mean it is what it is like just if any of you guys are in school um just just really think about that and 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 if i'm being honest like even i as much as i as much time as i spent you know looking at job openings and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff i could have done better um like I was just talking to one of my friends about the fact that like I never really got a lot of jobs through application. I always got it through like knowing someone or or um you know uh the job having no requirements, which me ends up with you meeting the craziest people. But uh overall, you know, it's it's just like um that's something that I have to get used to, like, like everything else, right? When I went to FZD, I was really closed off and in, in a lot of ways. And, and, uh, because of where I grew up, you know, growing up in uh, the ghetto of Chicago or whatever, like, like I had to deal with very different circumstances or whatever. So like, it, it, there's a lot of things I had to get used to as far as people being nicer and all that, whatever. Right. Uh, it, everything comes with its own challenges. Um, and this is just another one of them, you know, um, where, where was I going with that? Yeah, dude. Uh, what else can I really say? Uh, but yeah, I, I, I had to learn, um, through FZD, you know, to trust people, uh, a little bit more and it's going to be all right. You know, um, it really sucks that I lost my train of thought, but I'm just trying to not to, I'm trying to keep my voice down so I don't wake anyone up because I'm back here at like eight in the morning. So it's the graveyard shift or whatever. Um, ah, shit. Uh, what, what was I going to say, dude? Um, yeah, I was thinking about opening like a, like, well, reintroducing like a discord or whatever, but honestly, dude, like. I don't, I don't think anyone understands like the fact that like, there's nothing I can say that would like just click everything together. You know, it, it's just, 
it's just a matter of practice honestly like i said before uh, the school is just really um the school's just really enforcing those things on you like making sure they're like muscle memory like <laughs> I, I i can't say much else other than that like it's that simple so um i don't know and, and running a discord would be tiring and exhausting or whatever it's not it's not that yes yeah, it's just not a fun thing to do in moderation and all that I just can't be bothered um what else i think that's it for now i'll make another video later if i forget anything so catch you guys later peace